Otsukimi here. Who else would it be? This is Observations with Otsu. This is Monday morning. Uh, this is just right after where stocks should be opening. Actually, today is a holiday in the States. Today is Labor Day. Um, I forgot about that. Like I, like, I knew it, but I also forgot that, like, it's a non-working holiday, and, and therefore, like, stocks are not open as well. I don't really care, honestly, because I don't really do stocks. I might, maybe I could do that once every month or once every two months. I don't know. I don't care. I don't really do stocks. The majority of my audience and followers do not do stocks. Um, and that's fine. I cater to an international audience on purpose. Okay. I live an international lifestyle and I have a better international audience anyway. So anyway, that being said, I am glad to be here. I really am. We're going to do a little bit different um, of a story here. I usually have a theme for observations. I still have a theme, but I'm not going to go over it the same way. The theme for this video is going to be what are the expectations for the rest of 2023 and what can we expect for 2024? And I'm going to go through that um, a little bit differently. So instead of having a theme and then cover each point of that theme with each coin, I'm going to cover the different expectations of the types of coins that I'll be covering. So for Bitcoin, I'm going to cover what is what does the rest of 2023 look like? Are we going to go to all-time highs? Are we going to go to all-time lows? Or not all-time lows, I guess, but like uh, you know, generational lows. What does that look like? What can we expect for 2024, especially with the having coming up and all the Fed crap and things like that? When we go to Ethereum, I'm going to talk about DeFi. What does that look like? The infrastructure, the network, things like that. Um, I'm going to go to Sol, Solana, and maybe more cover things like uh, like cross chain or why you know other networks and their abilities and and, and things like that. And then I'm also going to cover um, OP and ARB today. It's going to be a little different, like I said. I'm going to cover those and see what EVM-based coins will look like. So EVM-based coins are ones that are like uh, Polygon, or yeah, Polygon, and you know other coins like that, um, based off of the EVM system, which stands for um, Ethereum Virtual Machine. So basically, they take the same model as Ethereum and they incorporate it to their own. It's basically the new version of Layer 2. We'll go into that as well because we I also have some discussion about you know um, ZK Rollups for example. I I used to work with ZK um, ZK Rollups .io, the, uh, the company one of the big companies and they were probably a top three company a couple years ago. They kind of fell short a little bit because Snarks and and other coin you know other projects you know surfaced. Um, but we'll go into that as well. In addition to that, we are going to cover Dogecoin and cover meme coins in general. What do meme coins look like, right? And instead of looking at, I'm not going to look at XRP and Binance today. Um, I think I'll postpone those until Wednesday. I, I may look at them for a few seconds, um, but neither one of them are doing really that substantial anyway. So I think I can wait a couple days and it won't really hurt. Um, and if, if they, something happens, I'll update that. Um, but instead, I'm going to focus on um, Fetch AI and kind of cover the AI route. Um, and we'll go into that. I think this is going to be a little more variety, a little more fun. So this will probably be a longer video. I don't know how long it will be at the time I'm saying this, but this feels like it's going to be a 40-minute video. So just feel free to fast forward or what have you. I'm glad that you're here. Um, all I ask in return maybe is a like or subscribe because um, my subscriber count has been going down. Um, I'm looking at other ways to change that. But if you appreciate the type of content like today, go ahead and just you know like or subscribe. I don't really ask it all the time, but um, that, that, that does help me. Um, and then if I eventually get monetized with that, that can help me be more self-sustaining with these videos. I'm already self-sustaining, but um, that little extra can help. So anyway, there's... That that's the introduction. Some preliminary things. Um, not really much. The price is pretty much boring. I got some nowhere updates coming up in the Discord. I do have the bots coming up. I still have them coming up. I still have nowhere premium coming up. Those are arriving. I will start doing mon uh, mini markets every day now, Monday through Friday, or actually Sunday through Thursday, I should say. Um, Sunday through Thursday around the daily close. So it's 
it's about dinner time for me when those come out. That's why I usually wait a couple hours after because I can't, usually I'm out with dinner or, you know, my, my sons want me to do something. So I usually cover them about, um, you know, right now this says almost 17 UTC. I usually cover them around 2 UTC. And so maybe I'll update the time. Maybe that's my fault for doing that. Um, so I'm going to do about five updates a week. Um, and that also includes, that also does not include the observations with Otsu, which is this video, and nowhere market updates on Wednesday. I also have some topical ones coming up, some videos on X Twitter coming up. I got a lot of stuff coming on, coming up, so I'm going to roll those out slowly. Um, in addition to that, just one small thing. My son is actually swimming right now, and I um, logistically... You may hear some noises, and I apologize for that. I'm going to try to edit those out after I record, but I can hear them pretty clearly. So I apologize if I maybe stop for a second to understand what's going on or in case he's getting chased by a clown trying to stab him or something. I don't know. So anyway, that's all the stuff. A lot of things to talk about today. I'm excited. Let's get started. All right, so first things first, I kind of want to do like a summary of like price like price predictions, just just like those kind of things in general, um, because I do think it lends itself to its own small conversation about price expectations, um, price predictions, things like that, especially as we're coming up towards the end of the year, especially as we have the halving coming up, and especially as well as we have some economic factors to consider. Even in the United States, we have an election, we have, we have a major election coming up next year, so all these play into it. A lot of people have, think and they firmly believe with supposed evidence that they have correlations to the stock market. We look at things like Jerome Powell, FOMC. So a lot of those things come up. So it's very speculative and reasonable to try to be speculative about these price points. So I want to keep that in mind. I also know that crypto especially is very... I don't want to say hostile, but but very passionate about defending their particular stances on price predictions. Okay, when I first started in 2017, it was 33k by July. That was the meme. It became a meme. I can't remember the guy that does it. <clears throat> I think he's still around, but he swore he had so much evidence that $33,000 Bitcoin was coming in 2017, and we can kind of look at that honestly, and we. We know that that was not true, um, but it was one of these things where we were like right here, okay, and imagine this was on the daily, actually I'll just, maybe I'll just go to like the three day to make it easier, but we were like right here, right, and so he was thinking that we would, like right here he was thinking that we would hit 33k, he thought this was a dip, then he thought this was a dip. And then he thought this was going to curl up. And there's all kinds of things, right? And so, like, once once May hit around, I think he... Anyway, I, I shouldn't get all too much into that. But the point is, this person was very passionate about it to the point where he was starting to get, you know, enemies. And, um, you know, I, I, I was naive at the time. Uh, as 2018, I'm sorry. Um, I was naive at the time. And so I kind of played into it. But... The point is, the dude was wrong, and he laughed it off as a joke. And so, I think that's very stupid, honestly. I don't normally, I don't say that word very lightly, but it's one of those things like, you know that you're wrong, and then you play it off as a meme. And so, we've we've seen those before, right? Like, I've, I've had a lot of trust issues from 2018, because I believed a lot of people, and then all of a sudden, you're told... Well, why are you why are you following me? Why why do you believe everything I say? I'm just a random dude online. But that's that's not how this that's not how everything goes down, right? So that's what a lot of people don't understand, and that's why I take the position that I take is a lot of people look up to high follower people and they really shouldn't. They they really shouldn't. I I, I do agree with that part. The problem is you got some people, especially small cap influencers, that say, here's the next thousand X coin. Oh, by the way, if you follow me and you do this, you're dumb. Okay, don't follow me. But by the way, this is the next million dollar dosh whatever. So, see what I'm saying? Like, they play both sides. Um, and so it's just, it's really haphazard. 
but anyway, going back to the price predictions, I've seen a lot of it, you know, and, and, you know, I've seen 200,000 Bitcoin price predictions. I've seen $2,000. I like, I've seen like $1,800 price predictions and things like that. The point is, and, and it's really worth like, like, I don't just say that my last week's video is a good one. So you should follow it because it was my recent one. It really was a good video in my perspective. And I didn't get a lot of views actually. But um, price can be deceptive. Price predictions can be deceptive as well. And so we look at prices. Um, what we, we look at charts how we want to see and how we want the prices to be seen. And so that's... Um, anyway, it gets convoluted. But current day, 2023, I've... Again, I've seen people... You know, before we had this big jump, I saw people say that we're going to 8,000. And we might still. That's a very nasty wick, by the way. Um, we might still. I'm not saying that we won't. I think that there's very high doubts that we will. I'll get into that in the Bitcoin section for this. Um, but then it pumped and everybody's thinking that we're going back to 60K. So, like, what what's wrong with you? Okay, like, what's wrong with these people? Um, so anyway, there's, there's other price predictions. Like, I saw one that says this year that we will go to all time highs. Well, okay. I mean, it's one of those things like, can it happen? Yes, it can. Uh, so that's, let's just say 165%. That's easily attainable in four months. So I want to be crystal clear about that. It is possible. It, it is possible and it is probable. Now, is it likely? No. Um, and that's not necessarily based off of an, any type of analysis. Um, that's based off of intuition that it looks very unlikely. We have a lot of things to consider before we get to that point. Now, that doesn't mean that that person is wrong or people or whatever. And I'm not saying that they're dumb. I'm not saying anything about that, right? I'm not, I'm not talking about anybody's character. I'm not even disagreeing per se. I'm talking about the idea of price predictions. And like people have these wild ideas of price prediction and they stick to them and you can't have discourse with these people. Um, and so there's other people as well. Like I've seen several people talk about the Bitcoin having for next year that it's not going to do anything. And I'm like, okay, like I don't understand the data point behind that. And, and usually somebody that says something obscure like that comes up with obscure data and they put their obscure data before the horse and they try to lead with that and say, all right, because of this, because of this, Y, X will happen. Well, you can't do that. You got to look at because of X, Y will happen. So you can't predict price in a certain way without figuring out where things are going to go. Now, I said a lot of convoluted things. When it comes to all-time high, for example, here, um, I don't, and I'll, I'll turn on my my Arun band, for example. Like, currently, this is bearish. And basically, the, this means that the Arun is bearish as well. So, we can talk all that we want. You can you can talk to me all day about this chart, and you think that we're going to go to 70,000K um, by the end of the year. And, okay, that's fine. If you show me this chart, okay, nice. I'll give you a thumbs up, probably. The problem is, I'm not going to trade this. Why? Because from a trading standpoint, there's no validation point for this. Okay? In order for this to be valid for me, this needs to flip bullish. The error needs to flip bullish. And we need to recover my my measured line. This is the line that I look at to, to buy back in or to add. So if you may notice this, I bought down here, I held up here, and then I also bought right here. If you look on my on my post on Twitter, and you look at a timestamp for roughly around the middle of June, you will see that I bought about $25,000. I bought at $25,000. So that plays into it. I, I would be probably not the most intelligent person if I decided to buy here because I expect it to go to 70000 the charts are not telling me that's the case, okay? 
Um, now other people bring up other data points and things like that, and that's good. That's all good and well. Okay, I'm not against that. Um, the point is you don't know what's going to happen that way. You have to have other data points um, that point towards that. Okay, and so so generally speaking, I'm also against, and, and that's one reason why I'm also against things like Fibonacci blocks. So like I use them as a midpoint, and I, I used one recently here, but that would be like saying, all right, because of this setup here, you know, I'm going to go to my settings and do like 3.6, okay? And I, I actually didn't know that it would go up there, um, funny enough, but that would be like me thinking, all right, so it retested here, so now I think it's going to go up here. Well, that doesn't tell me jack squat. I put two lines where I wanted them to go, and that's where I think the line will go next. Well, that's that's wrong. There's no there's no context for why I did that. And so a lot of traders, you'll see a lot of even good traders will do this. They don't understand the nature behind Fibonacci things or GAN boxes. I saw one with like a weird circle. Like, I don't know if I can even find that one. I think it's here. Yeah, Fib circles. This is so weird. I have, I think I've maybe used this as a joke once. And again, I'm not saying that this is wrong, okay? That's not my argument here. But the thing is, is like, what, what reference are you using for this? Okay, like, what's... What's the reference point, right? Like, because it went here, you know, like, like, where's it going? Like, does it matter if it goes up or down? So that's the thing. Like, I'm not educated in this, the fib circles. So if you are, then you are better than me in this regard. Okay. The point is, I think it's well apparent that 99.99% .99 of people don't know what fib circles are either. And so when you do this, when if you... If you are an expert at fib circles and you tell people this, um, you are you are using pr prestigitation to convince people that you are a better trader. Okay? You are not using hardcore analysis. You are using um, sparklers or some visual way to dazzle your audience. That's what prestig prestigitation means. Okay? Okay. Um, because and what it doesn't there I don't care about the reason okay but the point is like what's what is the point right so you need to you as a trader if you want to buy or sell or look at a certain price you need to understand why or where you're getting at okay and so that goes into my price points which I'll get into with each asset and but so this is just the introduction of that so anyway um, I said a lot. I'll get into the having portion in the Bitcoin chart um, segment, but I kind of want to focus on that, right? So a lot of people have wild theories. Now I don't hold to a lot of my things, but mine are also more abstract. My, my, my priority, my preference is not to care so much about price predictions because they are a distraction. Okay. It's like asking me to watch the Super Bowl here in the States. I don't know. Um, asking me to watch the Super Bowl, um, and I used to be a Charger or I used to be a Steelers fan, and so um, like if the Steelers are playing the Chargers, for example, actually they wouldn't do that. And they're they're in the same same conference, but anyway, you got two teams in the Super Bowl, right? And you're asking me like what what do you think my prediction is for the for the for the score, and maybe I'm going to gamble on it or something like that. Like people get excited about those things, okay? So you get the you get the dopamine rush. You 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 bet on it, even if it's just with your buddies. Like, oh, we're doing twenty dollar um, twenty dollars put in the pot, and then the winner takes all, or whatever. So, whatever, nothing. I that's not me. I would not do that. But that's the same lines of what we're looking at here. People look at price predictions because they want to feel something, okay? And I would guarantee you, if if someone had a price prediction of like $85,000 by the end of the year, and that would be the top for the year, they would not sell at $85,000. They don't want to. This isn't a price predictions are not about getting the price to where you predict them to be. Price predictions are a way to try to flex what you think price will be. So does that make sense? So that's basically um, another way of putting the cart before the horse.
So I will mention my predictions, so to speak, but they're not really predictions. They're more just like abstract, um, um, reasonable uh, price points that prices could go to, if that makes sense. So I said a lot. Um, I hope you understood some of that. If not, feel free to message me. Um, but let's get started into the charts. All right, so let's go to Bitcoin. We already are in Bitcoin, so that works out. So we'll go to the weekly perspective. And so I'll get the prediction, the price ideas out of the way. Like, what are the chances I think we can go to all-time high? I, I I do think it's very low. I think it's probably lower than 20%. Um, I, And I think there's a lot going on here. Like, I don't, I don't, and also, I don't understand the reason why we should try to predict things, okay? Because if... Bitcoin is going to go up to all-time highs this year. We have very little time to work with. So that means you should, if you really think that, you should be buying right now. Okay? And that's the thing. Nobody's buying right now. And so that we got to look at that, right? So there's a few different things going on in regards to that. As far as prices, um, let's see, I mean, our, our low for the year was... Basically, the current low, honestly, is like 16000 Like, do I think we'll go that low? No, I, I don't think so. I My lowest price, I, this right here, this was a very solid retest with a very solid wick. I don't think, I mean, the lowest I think that we would ever go was would be like 19 or 21. I, I have a hard time thinking that we go um, below like 22.5, for example. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. Now, can we go lower? Of course we can. But I'm looking at it from levels to levels. So I'm not looking at this as price predictions per se. I'm looking at this. Sorry, I had to sneeze off screen. So um, I'm looking at just different retest points. And we had a pretty significant one back here. So we had, kind of zoom this up a little bit. So we had the jump up here, kind of consolidation down. Um, and then a pick up through here. We had a good retest here. I really like this one. Now, there could be some debate on whether that was good enough or not. That's not my concern about this. My concern is looking at price points. So this looks like a very healthy retest point to me. We did retest this. In fact, we did retest this twice. So um, I think that that um, doesn't need touching again. But that's what we got to work with. Um, I'm looking here. I wonder, are we setting up for a bull div on the monthly? I don't think so. Um, let me see here. Sorry, it just doesn't look like it. But we'll keep that in mind. Nope, doesn't look like it. So anyway, just never know. I want to look at something if it's there. So that would probably be my low area for the for the rest of the year for the rest of the year not necessarily in general um do i think the top is in for the year i think there's more i think it's more likely that the top is in for the year than we get all time highs for the year i will say that now do i think the top is in however that is very tough we have now i my maximum price point, I would probably say, is like 47000 And the, one of the reasons is we have this structure right here. Mainly this area right here coincides with this structure here. So I think people don't really understand how difficult this will be to, to break through. And so it is possible that we might not see an alt. We, we might not break this for the rest of the year. I, I think that's possible. Um, especially if we break down below you know the twenty four thousand dollar range i think it's it's very unlikely to break past this point now the thing is the long the shorter the longer i shouldn't say how do i say this properly the more that we go down the more likely i am to buy of course that's that's pretty much granted right but the thing is i do think that we're going to have a good run for 2024 and so this is the first price point that i'm looking at um, the second one is this area right here. And so I think I have a ha very hard time believing that we're going to break both of those, much less the this one. Okay. Much less the lower of the two. So I think it remains to be seen, of course. Now, 
I'll get into the lower time frame parts of that. But as far as prediction goes, that's what I'm looking at. I don't, I do, I have very high doubts. I, I'd probably say there's a 90, there's only a, maybe a 1 or 2% chance that we break 37,000 for the year. Um, now, do what are the chances that we break 30 or 32, let's say? Um, maybe, maybe like 25%, I would I would say just roughly based off of the nature of the current price. Okay. We had, we had a good consolidation structure. We, we tried multiple times. We failed, didn't work out. We have no ascending triangle, no other support structure. This is not supported by anything right now other than this. Okay. And so once this falls, if it falls, you can pretty much say goodbye to any all time highs. And so that's why, I do think the all-time high thing is kind of, eh. I mean, I'm not, a, I'm not against people having price predictions. It's just um, doesn't seem very prob probable to me. So that's Bitcoin's outlook. If I want to look at for like 2024, for example, um, that's tough. I think I need to go to Brave New Coin and talk about the having. Yes. So this is the having. It's in the red. Now, a lot of people come up with a suggestion that there's no prior pumps to the halving and then we usually get the pumps after the halving. I am typically in agreement with that. I That is the common theory um, and that is the theory that I tend to agree with. Now, the issue is, is that some people want to be contrarian and they want to say, well, everybody believes in that so that way it's not going to happen, it's going to be expected. Price is going to be built in, and that's not necessarily the case. Okay, that's it. It's not necessarily not the case either, but I don't understand that kind of mentality. Like, I, to 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 be contrarian for the sake of being contrarian is not a good way to view any sort of critical thinking or anything like that. Okay. I'm not saying that they're wrong. Of course, I'm not saying like, I know people that hold this view and it's like, I'm fine with those people. There's nothing wrong with having an opinion or even an educated one. Okay. Um, I think, um, I think there's some flexibility in that, but as far as the data sets, there's nothing there's, there's no data that really tells me that that's a wrong view. Okay, I can understand why people think that it could be a wrong view. And so that's the thing. Is it absolutely wrong? No, I think it's a very wise common theory that doesn't have any sort of major objections to it other than the fact that everybody thinks that that's going to be the theory. Well, that's fine, but that like, but that's also like the theory of gravity. Like, Everybody, I think, is in consensus about the theory of gravity, and and but the theory of gravity is wrong is 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 correct. It's not wrong. It's right. So unless it gets proven otherwise, and that's okay. Like we can be proven otherwise that gravity could be something that it's not currently in our set of theories. See what I'm saying? So same with the having. Right? I have no reason to believe that having is all of a sudden this false measure, okay? Now, could it be coincidental? Yes, it could be. We, I don't, have we had enough halvings? I think that's debatable on both sides. Um, I do think that we've had a sufficient number of halvings to reasonably have that expectation, but I can also understand how, like, those have, I think we're at four now, we're coming to four. I can understand why that might not be enough data as well, okay? So I understand both. I look at things a little bit differently. I've you can look at some other videos from earlier this year, late last year, where I talked about 200 EMA, um, going like that. As far as as far as that goes, I'm a big fan of looking at price history with that. And I see something like this, where we have blown up above this, and we have not went down. Okay, this is one of those things. We are at the 200 weekly right now. Okay, at the time of this chart. Um. And every time that we've broken above it, this is a great example that goes into the having. Every time that we've broken above it, we have not held below it. And so 
or well, except for maybe here. I, I guess I should say once we broke below it and went above it, we didn't go back below it until the next cycle reset. A lot of people don't think that this is a full cycle, by the way. Um, I disagree. Um, mainly because this was the beginning of the cycle. A lot of people think that this is the cycle. Okay, where I disagree. I think this is the cycle. Okay, and that's where a lot of people get confused, right? And so I can understand, we do typically view it as two cycles, so I'm aware of that. Um, but this, there was no new low. This was the low. So that's, I don't understand why all of a sudden that makes a resetted cycle, especially in this low of a time frame as well, right? And so a lot of people that take a view of this as a new cycle view this previous cycle like so. And so where I would not, I would view it from, you know, I usually view it from bottom to bottom. Okay. And I guess some people view it from top to top. I don't know. So it, it, it goes, nobody's really right or wrong. Okay. It's one of those things like it doesn't have any major effect on analysis. So, um, anyway, so this is what I'm looking at, right? So when this happens, this to me signifies the end of the bear market. And so that's what we had here. We have already tried to go down below a few different times. And we have not. Could we? Absolutely. Absolutely. But have we? No. And so that's what I'm looking at for this. I have no reason to believe that we are all of a sudden going to go down below. Um, because we haven't. Now, this goes back to the having Because this has only happened, let's say, once. If you count all those as one twice three times four times so this has only happened the same number of times as the having so i could be wrong i could be i'm welcome i'm open to being wrong if we close down below here on the weekly i will be closing all of my bitcoin holdings for pretty much um, and so because this is my metric for holding long term and i bought here and if we don't hold it then that's fine Okay, but, and the reason I do that is because if you would have bought here and held to here, you would have an easy 3.5x. And so it's more complicated than that, right? Because I do margin, things like that. The point is, this signified a long-term bullish trend. Um, this is currently not looking the best, but still is as well. So we'll see how that goes. Um, and that could bounce up. We've... I don't think we've had a really a retest and that's so that's the counter that's the counter thought right like except for this you know every time we went towards the 200 we broke it now a lot of people including myself think that the current price action mimics the 2015 range as well so that's another video but we've we've attempted this and this this sort of look this was a clear consolidation at the EMA. I understand why people would have thought this would have broke down, but it didn't. But guess what? Um, not only did it didn't, it took a very freaking long time to do. So, let's see. About 287 days. So, that's depressing, right? And so, let's look at this here. About 210 days. So, we could take... I don't know why it, it looks differently. I think... Trading to change something. So looking at maybe like two more months, that that's reasonable to me. I, as much as I don't want that, waiting 60 more days to get a significant price difference or to uh, get a, you know, a, a, a local bottom, I guess, that makes sense to me. I'm okay with that. Um, especially if that means I know that the bottom is in. So going in regards to 2024... <laughs> I don't really see us going past that previous range. So like right here, I think that we could stay within this structure, this area until the happening. I think that makes perfect sense to me. So that's what I'm looking at. So if you're looking for an exact price points, I will disappoint you on that. But as far as this goes, I'm looking at somewhere between 21,000 and 47,000. So a rune here is bullish or, or bearish. I'm sorry, bearish consolidation, waiting for a bullish trend. 
it's at 19 percent so we got roughly about three to four weeks tops to go for bears to do something significant if they don't then the bulls are back in town and we'll go there we got the rsi below the 50 once if or when we get above back above that that looks better to me so we'll see how this goes i could see us um um th by the way this is not the current candle we still have one here actually um this only does it only prints closed candles so so that's what i'm looking at we could see a bounce up above here we could what i went to say is we could see a significant drop and we could see that today we could see that tomorrow that's perfectly possible but then we wick for the rest of the week okay so that's possible as well and so i think that could qualify we could retest this breaker um to you know 24 6 or even as low as 22 even let's see what kind of price would that be um the first one would be like 6.7 the other one would be like 15 percent. i think if we go down 15 percent, i don't think that's recoverable but i think seven percent definitely is for a weekly if that happens within the next 24 hours that's definitely possible especially since the stocks are closed and typically we do we do go red on the first um stocks open of the week so that's kind of what i'm looking at for prices now as far as bitcoin itself let's go ahead and do our analysis and i knew this would take a long time so i apologize um, but feel free to skip everything if you as as it suits you um so as far as the weekly again this looks pretty bad so this is the added wick not much going on could be because stocks possibly but we're still hovering that 200 ema we still got that retest going on um and so that's what i'm looking at i think that we could i really do think looking at that price prediction that we could wick all the way down and then wick above this and so that would only take so if we wick all the way down through it let's just say eight percent to be a little conservative and we close back above it as much as like one percent so i think we could go down as much as eight percent this week and then wick another six to seven that's if the 200 ema theory works i'm not saying it will or it should but that's kind of what i'm looking at that's that's the front and center thing for me because i hold that so strongly to my long-term holds and so i've again i've got no reason to believe that the 200 ema won't hold either um there's i know a lot of people don't trust emas but that's because they may not be looking at it properly as well so anyway that's what i got with that um but that's pretty much it we're here i'm expecting a bounce got the consolidation and again if this if this stays like that for the next two weeks i think that's a really good sign that we could bounce um going on to the daily um this does not look good a lot of people are looking at this and thinking that we're going to go down more and so i can i can understand why because if we go down to like the 12 hours even more we can see it pumped up fade this was the eat but this was all etf stuff okay so that's the thing when we get this is why i don't like news based pumps and dumps because we had a pump up here because of etf we had a delay or whatever it is and i don't even know i don't even keep track i don't even care anymore right now so we went through it so we had the pump to signify blah 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 and then we had the inverse of that so now we're down here now we're retesting that so the problem is that people are looking at this as a structure point for the rest of this entire order block and we really shouldn't because it had nothing to do with anything that's currently going on other than the news so if the news didn't take place this would pretty much just be a straight line okay now a few things to consider a bart move like this is bearish bart bart patterns are bearish typically or i should say they're not quite bearish but they're a sign of illiquidity which is typically bearish um, unless we get a longer consolidation period for to develop a markup period and so that's what i'm looking at um, for 2024 is a markup period so anyway um, so we have this going on looks like a bearish retest so far i would consider it one but if we take this out and you know let's say we look at it on the third day that's kind of what it would look like if you just took out the wicks so if you took i don't know if the line chart will do it it's insignificant honestly but that's still not the best sign 
um, that's, uh, yeah, not the best sign. So I think that we could still get down here, down here in the $25,000 range. The problem is, like I've said before, we have the retest. We have all this consolidation periods to look at as well. I do think the 24000 to 25100 range is going to be very difficult to break through. If it does break through very easily, then the market's pretty much in deep trouble. But I do want to stress the fact that a lot of people clickbait you into thinking that this is more fearful than it is. Okay, I take the position that if this is holding, which it currently is, I have no reason to think that it's going to blow through. Okay, so it can, and I think that you should be situated for that. But I think it's not the best idea to short here because you think it might See what I'm saying? Or whatever, you know. I don't know if that makes sense, okay? Um, you look, gotta look at it from almost like a, a critical thinking as well as technical analysis. Um, but you you have that type of position. I'm under the analysis that you are quote unquote innocent until proven guilty. So as far as price action goes, this is support until it's proven that it's not. I have no reason ever to doubt supports ever, okay, ever, 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 because if you decide to no longer view supports as supports, then you can't use that as a frame of reference for any type of analysis ever, okay, because so, what's to say that the support that you do think is support is actually support if you don't think the other one isn't as well, so if you don't think a support is support, you got to have reasons to believe that it is, not just like you thinking something will happen is not a good enough analysis that it will or should happen. Does that make sense? So that's what we got on the daily. Um, we're going to go, I spent a lot more time on it than I thought. So we're going to go to Ethereum next, kind of go over some themes. I might take out the, um, some of the layer two stuff, but we'll kind of, maybe we'll go a little faster, but um, Ethereum is next. Ethereum. And we're going to take a look at this as well. So with Ethereum, I'm going to go to the chart a little bit. Then I can talk about more about DeFi, where I think it's going to go. I think I'll add NFTs in there as well, because um, we got some things to consider. So let's go to the weekly, um, and we can kind of take a look on this. So again, we're hovering above this 100 EMA, or the 200, I should say. This is not as relevant as it is on Bitcoin, so I want to keep that in mind. So I'm actually going to get rid of this. And continue the analysis from there. Kind of also just delete everything as well. Start afresh. Okay. So um, we had that big drop down a couple weeks ago. This was a pretty, usually when you get a wick like that on a bearish candle, not typically the best sign. Um, but it is what it is. It's not necessarily um, a bad thing because we had a wick like this as well that ended up being bullish and then that ended up doing pretty well. So I never, a lot, a lot of traders do this. A lot of them say like, oh, we got this type of, you know, we got a pin bar or a SPF or whatever it's called as a way to signify a hardcore direction. And that you will find, and I've done back tests on this, you will find that that is usually not the case. Um, it happens so much less than you think. And that is exactly why I made the video from last week, which I'm telling you, it's worth checking out. If you haven't, because so many people have perceptions of how everything should be viewed and most of your perceptions need to, all of your perceptions need to be challenged, but a lot of them are wrong, um, honestly. And so it's worth taking a look at um, with that. But as far as this goes, pretty mediocre week so far. It's only been one day. Market's looking a little bit better overall, but not worth much. Um, at this time. Um, so we had the reclaim level. So that's right there. Or the or we had the deviation level, I should say. So that was the retest. And so now we're looking at this lower level, about 1660 to 1560. And so this is kind of what we're looking at right now. We're in this level. Um, I think this retest was a failure. We didn't actually retest anything. And so honestly, if we kind of look at it from a different perspective, we could take this retrace tool 
and let's kind of change this back to its original position and you can see that this looks a lot better looks a lot cleaner and this is also gives a context of that retest point at 1600 which is about 30 dollars away from where we are and so that's what i'm looking at right now 1600 is a good valid price point for me um, to see a bounce i still think that we're in this area where we are it's it's not worth shorting it's not exactly worth longing either, so we're just kind of waiting around. And I think that's why a lot of people are so impatient and bored is because we, we do need to wait for a significant move. And so this is where you need to pay attention instead of ignoring the prices, right? And so we do have a bullish consolidation, pretty pretty significant here, but we have no, no uptrend on this. So this is more of a quote-unquote Aaron divergence. So again, I am looking at this. Um, I'm looking at a pump up to 1672 potentially. I think I'm a little neutral on this overall. I'm, I'm not confident in that it will go up to basically 1700, <clears throat> but I'm just saying that's what I want to personally see out of that. So that's pretty much the weekly. On the daily, we can kind of zoom accordingly, and this is where that distribution pattern comes in from the from the the day from the weekly context and we can see where we're at we do have a divergence coming in too we have this down move really ever since the middle the late middle of august all the way till now um to to early september and we have a slow up move on the rsi and typically that is a sign that we are going to go um excuse me that we are going to go up apologize i dropped something so we had this i think on bitcoin last cycle let's see here right here and this was was it june um late may of 2021 to late june of 2021 where we had kind of like a slow bearish chop and we even had the pump up fade as well and maybe i'll maybe i'll do a dedication a de dedicated um video on this on on twitter x whatever and we had the increase of the RSI as well. Now, the thing was, is that that was a valid divergence, but it still resulted in a drop down. This is not a failure, however. Um, I think if we go to the third day, we can see it actually did work out on a higher time frame. So this is kind of what we're seeing now. We even had the same thing. It wasn't as illiquid as it is now, but the same idea remains. And so this was a third, this is a third day chart. I think the other one was a daily Ethereum chart. So this is what we're working with. And so what we can see is, as long as this has a trend, this is not a fully broken down price area. And so we might see an uptrend from there. So we'll see. It remains to be seen, and that's that's part of the deal. So um, that's what I see on the daily. Other than that, um, I don't know if there's too much. I, I'm, I think that people should be positioned in case a big drop does occur. And what I mean by that is, don't I, I really think having a lot of risk right now is, is a really um, unwise idea, um, especially with altcoins, especially with more speculative altcoins. Um, usually small caps are kind of excluded in that regard um, because nobody really trades them, at least at scale. Nobody, I, I, that's what I meant to say. Nobody trades them at scale. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. Um, so I think overall... I think we need to be a little patient, but I think we can we can uh, we can have a little bit of hopium here. So as far as the nature of this and DeFi, well, obviously this it, a lot of DeFi does rely on Ethereum, and can we see a reclaim of this? I think so. As far as what DeFi looks like now, DeFi is very fragmented right now. It's it's unfortunate, um, but it is par for the course. I think. In areas where things are hyper bullish, like it was in 2021, a lot of people were um, very, very bullish, even the way that they talked about DeFi. And honestly, like a lot of things about DeFi, a lot of the flaws were present in 2021. They're, like they, they weren't, they weren't non-existent. We just ignored them because we were too bullish to care. And so now, now that we are not focused on the price we're looking at actual 
um, ways to innovate and things like that. So usually projects innovate during bear markets. A lot of my clients, I, 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 I tend to bring these clients on as paid clients. And I also tell my clients this as well, <coughs> that you, you must build, you must engage, you must grow during bear markets. Okay. Whether that's a project or whether that's an influencer, because that is the time to strike when everybody else is sleeping you need to still keep the doors open figure out ways to grow because by the time the bull market comes around you're not going to have time to do that and you're going to get the recognition for working so hard that will pay off and so that's the big risk about everything right not just crypto but every a lot of things in life like you need to put in the effort to get a reward and honestly Typically, the return is pretty good. <laughs> so, for example, I got a I got a newer client, um, and this is not crypto related, but they started a YouTube, and they want to get monetized as fast as they can. And so, I incorporated a new system. I said, "Hey, I got this new thing going on. I've been brainstorming this, so you came out at the right time. But you got to do what I say, and I'll, I I won't charge. I didn't charge them for this, but I did say on the condition that you do everything that I tell you to do." And we'll see where it goes. And they agreed to that. And well, their their account is on fire. Okay, it's really really good. Um, they in fact, I just got shared today that they're pushing about a hundred thousand views a month, which is pretty good. Um, that's pretty good for starting out. Um, about forty days ago. So uh, that's just something to keep in mind. But I, I say all that to say like. The hardest part about that is they post every day, okay? And and that I tell clients that like, if you want to get ahead, you gotta put in the work. You need to be consistent. Same with same with trading, right? You need to be consistent about this. You need to pay attention during the bear markets, and that goes along with DeFi and NFTs as well. NFTs are really suffering right now, and it remains to be seen whether they're going to bounce back or not. But the point is, I think they will. But the point is. Um, you need to recognize the good projects from the bad. Okay, so like, uh, and I've mentioned like projects like Ave. I think that will they will come back. There's a lot of coins that will, but you really need to get out of the mindset that anything will come back, especially your coin that you've only heard about. Like, you got to be rational about this. Okay, like, don't marry your coins. It's a very popular phrase, um, but it is very true, and I've learned that the hard way. Right, so um, just keep that in mind, really. So as far as the state of DeFi, I think it is going to grow. I do think it's going to change. I think the whole, I'm not into the whole multi-chain per se. Like I, I am and it will work, but not the way that we were kind of told that it will. Um, I would like to see an automatic multi-chain because the one thing I don't like, if I'm transferring money, let's say on Ethereum network from one to another, like UDSC, for example, and there's like, like there's like an ETH chain and a Soul chain. Like, why should I have to pick the chain? Like, like I understand why I should, but aren't we enough years in to where somebody should have made a software that automatically chooses it for you and understands the type of network that it already is? Like, you can't read it prior to that and figure out what chain it belongs to. That make I just. It just kind of baffles me a little bit on um, why that's the case. So anyway, um, that's that's that. But as far as DeFi and NFT, I, I think DeFi in general is gonna is going to improve and it's gonna get it's coming back. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't, especially with the Feds doing what they're doing. That's just more fuel to fire for um, DeFi. Uniswap won their case. There's a lot of good reasons to be bullish on DeFi, um, more so than centralized exchanges to be honest um, there's a lot of projects that are focusing on dexed exchanges that are mimicking the performance of um, centralized exchanges so that's good nfts are going to be a little bit different story i think a lot of them are going to go down i think a few successful ones from the previous cycle are going to come back the other ones are pretty much dead i think you're going to get new ones of course but you're also going to get a new way of uh, of issuing these nfts a lot of unique ones are very popular i think those will always stay popular i um, mean that's good it's a new way to look at these um i do think community-based nfts are going to do well 
I think the ones that will do the most well, so to speak, is projects like Pudgy Penguins. Now, the reason I bring them up is not because they are a good project, although they are. They have a good model that I really like. So their model is very community oriented, but they also do things like plushies and things like that, right? So when you start to have things like merchandise, like real merchandise, like when, once you start to realize that Pun Pun Pudgy Penguins is a brand and not an NFT per se, that's when it's going to accelerate. So I'm, I am a big fan of Pudgy Penguins. I don't have one. I would like to. If someone wants to give me one for free, just kidding. Um, but I do think that's more of the format of a more successful community-based NFT in addition to like the one-on-ones. And I think storyline-based NFTs will go good as well. Um, <clears throat> ones that actually have an actual story um, and incorporate that somehow, I think that will work as well. So that's Ethereum. I'm going to go, I think I'm going to cover Solana and the rest of them in one go. Um, and we'll try to shorten this video because it's already, I think, pushing pretty long. So uh, we'll go from there. All right, let's go to Solana. And we'll do like so. All right, weekly perspective. We'll go into, so the whole point of Solana was to talk about other networks. So ones like Solana and Adam and Binance. We'll cover those. We'll cover we'll cover EVMs as well. And I'll promise this will be a little shorter. But we had a big, so far a fade. Um, three weeks of downward price action. Not really even really good ones. Failure of the RSI 50. A bearish consolidation. So everything's on par for the course. Um, the only other thing that we have in reference to this is this right here. So we could wick above it. I think we need to be very... Um, we, we need to have close attention to this one to see if it does break below. If, if this is a bearish candle, then I think that we're in for a lot more downside. And so another thing that we can look at is this trend line here. And so this would be where I think if we get a bearish candle this week, I think it would go down to 1781. And that would be a decent hold position. I'm, I'm under the idea that Solana... So Solana is its own chain, right? And so... Solana over other ones, I think, might be one of the only few self chains that survive and and does all time highs. And so, if that's the case, anything under twenty, which is currently under twenty, is a fantastic deal um, because right now it's you know at the high. Well, the high has always been um, two fifty, but you're looking at like eleven, twelve x. I think that's a pretty good deal. Um, and all you got to do is maybe hold that for 18 months. So, you know, if you hold 10,000 of that, you're going to have, you're going to gain a hundred thousand of profits. I think that's pretty good. Um, so there's something to keep in mind. I think Solana is very underrated right now, very underestimated as well, but it does not have the the current formation of an all time high. And we can't expect that to happen either. I, I do want to make that clear. Um, so as far as the weekly, that doesn't look good. The daily does not look good either. This is going under this. This is not what I want to see, but I do want to see a reclaim. If this can reclaim above it to like 20 and a half, I think that's a very good sign. And I'll probably add to my positions as well. Um, another thing that you could probably do, you could probably just copy my system, um, and do, you know, like a, like a three like a three day or four day. I usually do four day, but when this comes back bullish, it would be worth just buying some and holding because then it could do something like this. So just something to keep in mind. But anyway, that's another story. So as far as this goes, this is its own chain. A lot of, a lot of ones like Adam's another one. Algo is another one. So how do I view those? Um, those are a little bit interesting i think you really have to go down to the project how does it work how does it operate what's the infrastructure so solana has a good infrastructure proof of history is still pretty good it still has a lot of things going for it really the only bad thing was is that it had a little bit of downtime but the priority thing was the whole relations to ftx and that's not the case it has survived but it does pretty good like phantom wallet was pretty good there's a lot of good things uh, it does a lot of good things right um it does a lot of things right and so 
it just needs a little extra push and I think we'll get there. Um, as far as other ones, I think that's different. And that's why I view coins like Binance Coin in a negative light because Binance Coin was created as a way to copy other coins. And so I, it was not made as a way to innovate, in my opinion. <clears throat> it doesn't have anything significant of an edge over other coins other than the fact that it's a brand. And so um, now that I'm not saying that that's a bad thing necessarily, um, it the, the network does work, but it also lends itself to more um, like casino coins, I call them and other things like I, I do, out of all the single chains, I think it is probably the worst one. I think it's worse than dot even. Um, and I'm not like, I like dot. I, I, I wish dot was better. I do. But dot also isn't really needed um, in the, the in like that type of interlopability is not really needed in the way that it's trying to be needed, and so that's where um, a lot of, that's where EVM really comes into play. EVM is really the interlopability that that dot should have had. Okay, dot is based off of its own thing like Katsuma and things like that. So. Um, Lost. I can get really technical, and maybe that's another video if you would like to see that. But overall, <clears throat> um, I think that's kind of something to play and in, put into play. I I do think EVMs, which we'll get into in just a second, I think they are going to take priority. They're going to be the next big thing for this cycle over regular coins. So I think um, networks like Algo are pretty much gone. Um, I think a lot of main layer twos like Ave and Synthetics will do okay. Um, and Synthetics is doing really good today. Um, but other coins like Algo probably not going to go do well. I don't think Litecoin is really going to do well either. Um, I mean, it might. You know, in like LinkedIn, I, I honestly, I'm a contrarian on this, but I do think LinkedIn is not going to do well. Um, and I can just kind of look at these. I think one inch will do okay. Uniswap will probably do better. But a lot of these coins are like sand. I don't think it's going to do well. And so you kind of got to look at these. Um, and when I say well, like I don't, I don't necessarily mean that they're not going to get all-time highs. I just don't think they're going to outperform a lot of new ones that will. And so that's the thing. You need to, you need to put it in perspective. Like I've seen people bring up coins that are like older than me in this like since my participation in 2017 like why are you focused on coins like iota for example or eos where they don't have any like they're not building anymore and even meme coins like dogecoin or I mean, it's a meme coin so that's different but some of these coins are not developing at all they've even said publicly that they're not and they're still doing really good like it just doesn't make sense to me so anyway that's kind of that's kind of that. So going into EVMs like OP and R, we can kind of look at those briefly. Um, and they have limited data. But I think this doesn't look good. The divergence is, is not good on here. Let's see what the weekly says on this. Um, oh, man, you got that slope here too. See, and this is the trouble with this. I, I First of all, I think we'll get down to 1.25. That's not really saying much either. But um, this could go down even further. And part of it is because it is a new coin so it could break down here have a consolidation period maybe at you know the 80 cent range and then go up and i think that that's i think that that's perfectly normal i really do um because it's a new coin you should never assume a new coin should whatever go down most of the time it needs to to discover a price that's comfortable um and so arb i think is even worse show with the binance um yeah so i I think I drew that I have, is this a log chart? Yeah, no, it's not. Okay, so let's go to four hour. Yeah, this just looks like it's going downhill, honestly. Um, I'm not really sure what I tried to do here. Um, I have no idea what this is. So yeah, we're kind of in a free fall with this. So, you know, this is your area. Needs to reclaim that for sure, but that doesn't look good. Not... That's kind of divergent, maybe, um, on the two day, perhaps. No, no, it's not. So I don't know. I don't. I don't like the way the arb is, but it's one of these things where you have this 
And so maybe that's what I was looking at. So maybe like 65 cent range is kind of where I'm looking at. And I think that that's healthy. I think that that's okay because you need to let these newer coins find price discovery areas like this. And so th that's why I didn't also buy in Pepe. It's just too freaking new. And everybody's saying buy. So that makes me think that people are trying to sell. People trying to get you to buy their bags. So anyway, I do think EVM coins are going to do well over non ones. Um, I think ZKs are going to do good. Um, I think um, AI coins are also going to do good. Like FET, for example, which has been doing good, pretty good, pretty well. Um, on an uptrend right now, I got about 3%, looking pretty good. I think this will, I have no problem thinking AI coins will go to all time highs. I think they are part of the next new cycle of things to be concerned about. Um, possibly even AI NFTs. But the thing is, it'll be a fad. I, I Everybody knows it, right? But um, I think those will be more important, especially the DeFi sector as well. So anyway, that's the video. I know that was a long one, so I apologize. Um, I'm hoping the next ones will be shorter. I hope that was a good video, though, for you. If not, feel free to comment and tell me don't ever do this again. So anyway, um, hope you enjoyed it. Like, subscribe if you did. And I'll see you next time.